Hey guys, welcome to Rosie's Dessert Spot. And in this tutorial, we'll be creating a really fun blood red cake with eyeballs for Halloween. So you're gonna need some fondant and some chocolate. I've taken some black fondant, rolling it into a log and cutting it into eight equal pieces. These are gonna be the tentacles coming out of our cake. Roll them into a rough ball and then roll them out again on your countertop, just back and forth until you have a cone. I've made sure that one side of the cone is a little bit thinner than the other side. And then to make sure that they maintain that shape, I press them down with a fondant smoother and pop them aside to dry. In the meantime, create your eyeballs. So melt down some white chocolate. I like to use Nestle compound chocolate. Paint it into some half sphere molds. These are my silicone molds that I've used here. I've got small ones and then the big ones as well for the very top of the cake. Let that set completely. You could do it in the fridge or at room temperature. If it's a cold day, it'll set pretty quickly. Once it's set, go in a second time and create a second layer of chocolate. Once it's set, it should come out of your mold pretty easily. Just press out on the back. And then take a hot pan in the meantime, pop it on the stove just on really low heat. You want to get that pan nice and hot. Pop two halves on there. Give it a bit of a twist, bit of a spin to melt that chocolate down a bit. Place the two together and then take off any excess chocolate. Do the same for the larger spheres as well. Once they're clean, pop them to the side and we'll work again with our fondant. So choose an eye color for your little chocolate balls and then roll it out nice and thin. I've used some cornstarch to make sure that it didn't stick to my countertop. This is, I believe, a number 10 piping tip, a circle piping tip. Rub it in some cornstarch and then take out the little holes out of your colors. Give it a bit of a tap to help release that little hole. Turn it around and then pop out your iris. I've used the back of a brush to help poke them out. Sorry, pupil, not iris. <laughs> on goes a little bit of water to stick on your pupil. Once all of the pupils have been attached, turn them around, give them a bit of a brush on the back just to make them sticky, and then pop it onto your chocolate ball. If you have a lot of excess cornstarch on there, you can use just a damp brush to help clean that up. It will make it sticky though, so don't let it sit face down on the countertop. I've got some white fondant to create the little catch light, rolling a tiny ball and then sticking it on with a bit of water. In the meantime now, we can start assembling our cake. So I have an eight inch here that's already been crumb coated. I've applied a second layer of frosting in red. I colored my white frosting with red gel food color by Chef Master. Once it's nice and smooth on the outside, take some aluminum foil that you have scrunched up and then just unraveled. Spray some canola oil on the back to help, um, help it not to stick once it's all dried. And then wrap it around your cake. Give it a good press to make sure that the pattern has indented and then pop it into the freezer. Repeat this with a six inch and a four inch as well. Notice I've also left the lip raised. I haven't brought that lip into the center. This is gonna make a much neater finish later. Also, if you guys are interested in classes, I am now officially running Zoom classes through video. I'll have those details linked in the description box below. After a good 20 to 30 minutes, you'll want to take your cakes out of the freezer and then gently peel off the aluminium. You might get little stragglers here and there that kind of rip off. You could use a spatula or a little scissors to help poke them out. Just make sure you keep an eye on that. You do not want anyone to have a mouthful of foil. For that top lip, we are going to cut it off with a super hot knife. So I had a metal knife, nice and sharp, sitting in some boiling hot water. Or well, water straight from the kettle. And then I'm gently sawing in and out and cutting off that top lip on all of the cakes. Re-dip your knife into the hot water as you need. Do the same for your 8 inch as well. To stack the cakes, you are gonna need dowels. You could use bubble tea straws or paper straws that I have here, or you could use actual wooden dowels, totally up to you. 
give it a bit of a twist and then pull it out of the cake where it marks red you know is going to be flush with the top of the cake so cut it at that mark. Release your 6 inch from the temporary board. There is a 6 inch cake board underneath the 6 inch cake by the way. Stick it to your 8 inch with a little bit of buttercream. Make sure it's centered and then press it down firmly to stick. In go three more bubble tea straws and then repeat with your four inch. No dowels are necessary for the four inch. To the now dried fondant tentacles, I'm adding a little bit of buttercream at the back and then sticking it onto my cake. If you're enjoying these tutorials, feel free to subscribe. We do upload two videos every week. It's always best to make extra just in case you snap any. And then take your eyeballs and then stick them onto your cake the same way. Just a little bit of buttercream at the base wherever it's going to touch with the cake. And you're sweet. I'm going to assemble my tiny eyes between the tears. Try to have them sort of facing different directions. I think it looks a little bit more um, effective when you do this. You could leave it like this or add some more at the very base. And your Halloween eyeball monster cake is complete. This is actually a lot easier than it looks, I promise. And it's super, super forgiving, this whole kind of murky, bloody sort of um, design on the cake. There are no such things as imperfections when you have this kind of style. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and give it a go, even as a one tier, I think it'll look pretty cool too. If you do, hashtag Rosies does that spot so I can see your awesome creations as well. Thanks again for tuning in and we'll catch you in the next one.